Hello and uh, welcome to my video about the Ackermann function. The Ackermann man function. Uh, the Ackermann's function was uh, first written down by the German mathematician Ackermann. Not in the form we, we're going to see here, but basically um, the idea is caught in, in this form. Uh, I think it was in 1927. And basically the function is known as a very rapidly growing function as the arguments to the function increase. So just recall um, a linear function, easy linear function f of x. Oh, what does this look like? Oop. Here we have x, f of x. So this is just you know growing linearly. So that means in every time instance here this delta is always the same, okay? That is linear growing. And maybe you know um, exponential growing, which is x squared. This will start with a smaller slope than the linear function, but as you see, uh, the slope increases. So you cannot say in every um, uh, in every tiny slice, even evenly evenly um, distributed slice is the same slope in f of x. That doesn't uh, apply here anymore. Okay, and uh, you you can see that this function kind of like explodes uh, compared to the linear function, but maybe you know there is also the exponential function which will which will grow even faster than uh, x squared but we're not considering this right now but um it's important to know that the Ackermann's function um even grows much more faster than all the exponentials and x squares and stuff um even for small arguments um I will demonstrate it uh, later. Okay, so first, just uh, let's look at the definition of the Ackermann's function. So Ackermann's function is represented as an a Ackermann of n comma m is defined as but first, um, I want to point out uh, which values these arguments can take. You know, um, so n and m must be an element of the natural numbers, including the zero, which is just zero, one, two, three, blah blah. blah. <coughs> so. You can't plug in uh, negative numbers here or fra even fractions, pi <laughs> or stuff, you know, okay. So we're, we're restricted to positive uh, natural numbers. Okay. And you can see this Ackermann function is not a simple function like this, so you can't just write it in uh, one line. It's kind of like a distribution. So th there is um, three possibilities uh, for this function. So the first case is if um, n is equal to zero. If n is equal to zero, if we plug in a zero over here, this function will just return m plus one which is pretty simple. So you just have to increment 
uh, this argument m. The second one, a little bit more tricky, is if m is equal to zero. And in this case, we have to recall the function, but we have to subtract a 1 from the first argument and simply plug in a 1 into the second argument. So, this, um, if we are in this case, here is a 0 and here is any, any number, so it can't be 0. But the zero here will be changed to a one. That's um, a pretty easy operation. So this is not too bad looking, even though it's a recursive call. Um, and the last case, if those uh, statements aren't true, this is the more ugly looking thing. And minus one, and then you have in the argument m, you have a recursive call of the Ackermann's function again. M minus one else. Okay. So, <laughs> um, yeah, let, let's try. Let's try to to see how we how we we solve that. Um, First of all, I would consider uh, a very easy case, like uh, ace of zero, comma five. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> what is that? Well, our n is equal to zero, m is equal to five. So this case shoots. So that is our case. We don't have to worry about these guys here. So m is equal to 5, 5 plus 1 is 6, so that was easy. <coughs> if you have an Ackermann function of 0, comma something, you always have the result immediately. <laughs> okay, let's try something more tricky, like Ackermann of... Uh, <laughs> Not make it too complicated. Well, one comma two. Um, this is equal to well, okay. Our n is equal to one, and our m is equal to two. So these two cases uh, don't hold. Okay. So we have to deal with this uh, body over here. So just simply write it down <laughs> and uh, concentrate. Okay. Um, so n is equal to 1, and plug this n, it is 1, sorry, into here, which will 1 minus 1, which will give a 0 here. And now in the second argument of the first function call, we have another function call. So a sub so n remains uh, unchanged, so we simply plug in this 1 over here. And <coughs> the m is uh, decreased by 1. So m is equal to 2, this will yield a 1 over here. And now you might ask, well, what did we gain since we still, <laughs> we still have these uh, uh, calls and we don't have any number and this one also cries for for this uh, function to be shooted. So, well, <coughs> maybe you realize that this argument decreased and also this argument decreased and uh, we might be able to run into a case such that m is equal to zero or even n is equal to zero to give us back a number and uh, you know solve the, solve the puzzle. And uh, I will show you a strategy how to do it. I mean, there is there are several ways to do it. Um, but let's look at it. Uh, um, I think it's uh, it's easier to understand uh, doing it in the way I'll show you right now. Okay. So 
we just don't consider the outer function call, but we only always consider the most inner function call. So here we have this one. And now we're just concentrating on computing this. And uh, as you will see, it basically it's very easy. It's just a lot of writing and substituting. Okay, we, we just want to compute the Ackermann function of 1, 1. And you see, we're, we're not having the nice cases over here. We still have this, this ugly looking thing over here. But our n here is equal to 1. And we have to um, subtract the 1, which will give a 0. Nice. Okay, another function call. The one will stay the one. N will be the will be the n. But we are able to decrease the m by one, so which will yield a zero. Okay. And now let's look at this body here, which is uh, Ackermann one comma zero. What is that? Now uh, realize that here we have a zero, so our in this function, or better say this function, our m is zero. So we have to look at this case, and this will yield. Well, here we have to subtract a 1 from n, which will yield a 0, comma, and then just simply plug in a 1. Okay. But what do, you, what do we have here? Now, remember, this is the n, and this is the m, and now our n is equal to 0. So we can apply this one here and m plus 1 is equal to 2 okay so now we have computed a sub 1 comma 0 and we can simply resubstitute this into this guy here so we've just computed this so that means this is a sub 0 comma 2 what is it? Okay, here we have a zero, so just increment m by one. Suck three. Now we can uh, substitute it into here. Um, it's equal to a sub zero comma uh, <laughs> three. What is that? Okay, we have a zero here, good shape. M is equal to three, incremented, it's a four. Nice, and this is our result to the Ackermann function of one comma two. I mean, you, you can compute uh, the Ackermann functions for <laughs> little larger values uh, than this one. You can check it on Wolfram Alpha, uh, what you want to do. But uh, I would not recommend uh, to <laughs> to do larger numbers by hand, since uh, you know it's if if you got the principle, if you got if you know how to compute this one, you can also uh, theoretically <laughs> theoretically you can compute uh, Ackermann four comma two. But I would not <laughs> do it by hand, since you need a lot of paper and time and you'll do a lot of mistakes but um, if you try to compute this um, you will end up with a number that has like 19,700 digits you know even th with these small numbers uh, and this is a very large number and I mean imagine uh, what would happen if you say like, uh, phew, I mean I'm free to choose any integer value, you know, uh, as we as we stated above, 
as we stated over here, you, you can this, this goes yeah we can use a million okay and I mean even even if you plug in a 50 50 10 I mean whoa this 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 thing will explode you know and um, I think Ackerman uh, used uh, this definition to determine whether um, things can be uh, computed or not. I mean, for for computer, uh, this function can pose a, a big problem, or uh, it's just very challenging uh, to deal with very large numbers. It can be. <laughs> okay. Well, that's it. I hope you learned something about the commands function.